Hey. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Board of Health regular meeting for Wednesday, October 9th, 2019. I will now call the meeting to order. As a reminder, this meeting is being video and auto recorded for future cable broadcasts and also for YouTube broadcasts. Uh, just to bring that to your attention. Uh, that being said, would everybody please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. That's everyone. Seth, why don't you come on up? Have a chair with us, please. Welcome to Dighton. Thank you. <laughs> and other areas. Um, why don't you go ahead and start, and if we have any questions, we can uh, throw them at you. And... All right, so um, the VPN update, um, basically there is a geographical application update that allows a uh, seller located in Massachusetts to make a sale of vaping products by online phone or other means for delivery to a consumer located in another state. New Hampshire and Connecticut are jumping for joy right now. <laughs> the area that I highlighted is the update. Everything else is still saying the same. So this basically just gives a little bit of grace to some right. of the vape only stores or the 21 and older stores that really relied heavily on electronic products. Um, in regards to the uh, pulmonary lung disease update in Massachusetts, that number jumped up to 121, along with one death in Hampton County for vape related illness. Um, so Massachusetts represents about 10% of those cases. So it's understandable why we're taking this head pretty high. Yeah, for, I mean, 50 states worth of vapors in one state makes up more than 10%. It's yeah, we did all our uh, inspections one evening. As a matter of fact, it was last evening when we had to cancel. Mm -hmm. So since we were going to have a meeting, we went out and made everyone come into compliance. I don't know if you've been out at all to any of our places, but um, they should all be in compliance. We. When I go to a place, so I, I check automatically, and I'm sure these yeah. guys do too, so. Yeah. Um, so. I've been to all nine of my communities, especially the vape only stores or 21 and over, and the only place that I've ever had an issue with was Attleboro and Fall River. Um, but just people are like, I'm waiting for, we were waiting for you to show up to basically tell us to comply. Yeah, mm -hmm. we I had that too. And we weren't gonna shut mm -hmm. down until somebody came and told us to shut down. And, um, you know. It is what it is right now. Yeah. Um, I've only had to take this out, and then they started. This is a ce the cease and desist orders that I've been using. Oh, and I wanted to make sure it was all right with you. I did it for Attleboro and Taunton. Um, but there's that little section just at the bottom, operation and violation of the diary, Right underneath the box, operation and violation of the cease and desist order is a violation of law may result in fine, seizure of vape products, or other penalties. Now, the big piece is seizure of vape products that usually gets them to comply. Um, but the other piece that I wanted to make sure was all right with everyone here is uh, underneath where I would sign just as an agent of Dighton Department of Public Health. I've been sworn in here and it's better for me to put, rather than director of Western Bristol County, to actually just have the community that I'm serving directly. I don't think that I would ever have to give one of these because it seems like everybody's already complying, but I just wanted to make sure as a backup plan that I have this ready to go. I would actually recommend as well as if you did come across in our community, yeah. someone that actually violated this, um, this normal procedure, but then um, we would like to invite them in and have them explain why on earth they still can't comply when it's uh, the information's out there and they've been instructed to. Mm -hmm. So I just want to actually bring them in and say, <clears throat> discuss with them. Because there's really no excuse anymore. Until, until the governor lifts it, if, when he lifts or whatever, um, mm -hmm. but there's no excuse for an establishment to um, dis um, display or sell in Massachusetts. So. Yeah, 
after so long. Yeah. Uniform since September 24th. We've had plenty of time now. Um, I really don't think that'll be an issue here, but this is just to cover the bases. Um, the last thing that I wanted to bring up is that the three stores that have filed lawsuits against the state, um, they're all uh, far north of here, but Boston Vapors, Vicks Vape Shop in Medford, and um, Massachusetts Dynamics in Weymouth, their pre uh, preliminary injunction is scheduled for October 15th. Um, they seem to be very prepared, so a lot of things could change in the coming week is what I'm, what I'm getting at. And there's a couple other people that have tried to hop on with this, but as of right now, it's three bigger stores that are... Yeah, this must have really hurt the vape shops. Yeah. Uh, totally, that's all they do, you know, so... Um, you know, it was kind of odd when I was in preparation for the last meeting. Uh, I was going to discuss this, actually, and wanted to actually increase the age to 21 for all vaping products mm -hmm. before. And then this came out about two or three days prior, the total ban, because mm -hmm. uh, I kind of felt the 21 uh, age would be probably adequate to... Uh, Rather than you know, grandfathering? It's, uh, well, <clears throat> nobody grandfather just set the new age at 21, mm -hmm. which is smoking is, so. Yeah. But we don't know if this is worse than smoking or not. I, at this point, I think it is, but. Well, it's already 21, the vaping. Yeah. Is it included? Yeah. It's just well, not, it's the, not the devices. Products. The non-nicotine products are causing a problem too, right? Oh, the CBD? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the flavored stuff, they don't know what's in it. Oh, yeah, but even the ones that say that they're non-nicotine, they still have, like, less than 1%, but they still come up positive for nicotine. So yeah, they can. Okay. Yeah. But if you wanted to look into stronger regulations, we could definitely work together okay. on that for tobacco products. Hey, now, have you reviewed, you reviewed our... Uh, Regulations. Regulations, mm -hmm. I don't know. I know there's a few things we passed on. Um, I don't know if you have any, since you just came on board, I don't know if you have any recommendations for us uh, moving forward with anything. Well, I know I've worked with uh, Norton a bit, and one of the things that they did is in moments like this, like so when the state was going to pass the 21 or older, they really took advantage of the time frame they had, and they kind of went across the board with the regulations, they did permit capping, flavor ban, uh, no blunt wraps, things like that. So those okay. are things that you can look into. If, well, I'm, I think that you guys already did the blunt wraps, where it's just the wrap itself, not the cigar. So, right. But flavor bans would definitely be a strong and very useful thing to get tobacco products out of the youth's hands. Mm. Yeah, especially, especially with their marketing. Ones. With the names, yeah, the, yeah. some of the stuff is just the flavors like strawberry, mm -hmm. chocolate, whatever it is. Some weird flavors and stuff. Yeah, that's the biggest driver for them using yeah. and trying those products anyways. But it's definitely something to uh, consider and I think it would be very, very useful to help lower youth use. Okay, now you are, just to make sure, you're doing the compliance checks within town, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do the annual inspections, pricing surveys, compliance checks, sign out checks. Okay. Anything? Either one? Yeah. Oh, well, welcome aboard. I think you're still working with Marilyn. She's working with you. Yeah, she comes in as a consultant. Yeah, yeah. she yeah. was in my office this week. She does a great. She does a great job. Yeah, she's great. And Definitely. I'm sure you'll do a great job as well. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank we'll you. be talking. I'm sure. Thank you. Moving on to the next order of business, 3B, update on 214 Pelt Street. Um, the owner's here. Yes, how are we doing? Good. So, so I cleaned it out? Wait, name oh. for the record. Oh, I'm camera. sorry. I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, Paul Freeman. Yep. Um, so I had the health agent go over and showed him that I cleaned the place out. Uh, we got any, all the furniture out. Uh, there was some left in the yard, but I've since put that in the dumpster. Uh, there were some sources of, that, that could have caused rats and some, some uh, uh, 
uh, dog food and stuff. Got rid of all the feces, as much as we can do without hot water. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, oh, I had, and I, I emailed to uh, Rosalind the, the uh, paperwork from the pest control. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask that. Um, I emailed that to her probably three or four weeks ago. All clear of uh, yep. them, too. Yep. Um, so, really, I, my next step is lift the, uh, if you could uh, possibly lift the. Uh, the order of of, uh, of condemning, you know, uh, and then uh, probably move to get an electrical permit and get the electrical service straightened out and go from there. Okay. So hopefully it'll be. Hopefully so you're ready to someone for someone to come out there. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll let you set up a date that's convenient for everyone. And yeah. So Jim and I went out and walked through, and it was ninety percent done. Yeah. There was some furniture on the lawn. When in the upstairs apartment, the, the tenants had moved out and there was just piles of stuff yeah. everywhere. That's all. But right. there's nothing that I would consider a health hazard in the house anymore. All that's been removed. So okay. um, I wouldn't have any problems lifting the health order at this point in time, assuming the rest of the stuff is in the dumpster, like he says. So you just when you when you get a chance, just mm -hmm. drive by or whatever. Yep. For the yeah, the first the first dumpster was gone too. So that's the one with the stuff that was in it that was. Any, any, uh, you know, could track rodents or anything like that. So that's been long gone. But we, yeah. could, we could keep the health order on and allow them to rehook up the electric. And until, you know, until the electric's on, we really don't want people living in the house anyway. So, so basically, yeah. I mean, uh, no electric, no hot water. That's a condemnable condition. So, but I, the order could be amended to, you know, hey, right. Yeah, we understand. I, we understand. You got to get in there to, to do X, Y, and Z with the electrical. Yeah. You know, basically, just say it's it's unfit for your human habitation. Yeah, at I'm this fine time. with that. I just, but, I just, you know, just want you to guys to know that I'm trying to do the right yeah, thing and make fine. it make it clean. And, I mean, the electric was a fire hazard, so Absolutely. that was the reason why it was the wires were right. cut. Yeah. yeah. So obviously, that needs to be corrected before we can turn it on, and then yeah. I think they were stealing, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Um, that's I would say. Uh, the electrical yeah. department in fact yeah. can deal with that. So anyhow, um, we'll get it all cleaned up. Um, do you want to amend the order at this point? Uh, since we're not going to meet for two weeks, and I think he wants to. Yeah, yeah. So uh, nobody has an to. issue with me getting electrical. I'll just get an so electrician out there and get an right, electrical permit. Right. That would. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. We could, so. we could have it as a the health agent's discretion if he as, yeah, we'll as he's moving too. along. Just be in yeah. contact with yeah. uh, Todd. And he has a bit with us and Jim. He's been letting us know yeah. what's going on. Yeah. Because we don't want to wait a couple of weeks. But the health order right now says nothing, so we just need to make sure it's yeah. okay to get in and do electricity. So. Yep. Yeah, after it's inspected. It's really no occupancy, right? Until right. these orders are corrected. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so you just plug right. away, but no occupancy. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. You want to finish I'll, I'll make a motion that uh, in regards to the, the health order, the condemnation order for uh, 214 Pearl Street, that um, an order remains, however, it's for no occupancy until all issues have been corrected. So okay. I second. guess when I get it completely done, I'll just, okay. I'll just get a new occupancy for that's all it. All right, motion yeah. made, yeah. second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Good, good luck. Yep. So once, once, there, once everything's all set, and Jim's all set yep. with everything, all the work, electrical, plumbing, whatever's gotta be done, and Todd's all set, just we'll yeah. just issue a correction <laughs> order that lifts, lifts the condemnation, Perfect. and you'll be all set. All right. Then you can do what you gotta do with it. Awesome, all right. you guys have a great night. Yep. Take care. Thanks for coming. Do you need hey, something hello. else? We're just hanging out. Man, yeah. what a good sport. <laughs> Moving on to uh, 3C, update on Beverly Street health order and bond permit. Well, <clears throat> I know Todd and Jim just went out there. Stacy's not here tonight. I also know that we have, we allowed them to keep the, the mother and the two we, mothers. Two mothers, two and mothers and whatever you call the little ones, yeah. to stay there until such time they're weaned, and then to remove them from the property. That was like um, November, right? Early November. Yeah. When you went out there, what did you observe? However, there was we an also inspection, had, right? they had to get filed for a barn permit and right. pay the transfer station fee, right. and they haven't done any of those two. And uh, I haven't been out there recently, but we, I think we did receive a call that the goats are still there. But I forget when the date yeah. was that they were supposed I to be I think I, I read the minutes. It wasn't it supposed to be September or October? I don't know. No, it was November. Or no, but she was, uh, uh, Stacey was supposed to go out and do a quick oh, right, inspection. Right, 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 right. It'd be on the meeting minutes when she was supposed to go out. 
The problem is we can't give her any permits until she pays the $15 right, transfer station fee. Plus the $25 late fee now because it's been so long since she bounced it. So. Yeah. And um, has anybody spoken to her? Stacy was supposed to talk to her. But no, I have to wait till we. She's been gone Stacey. for a week in Virginia, so we haven't. Yeah. Had to talk to her about it. We can yeah. follow up with uh, just yeah, make a motion that we table this until Stacy can provide us an update. Second. Okay, more so nice. No, it does open. No, there's no hook uh, latch on it, so it just keeps opening. Oh, yeah? Mm. Okay, I'm up to speed. Well, I, I think. Future. Well, so we got the motion. Uh, I'll act. We'll, we'll act on the motion. Motion made and second is able. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I'll bring it up <coughs> next meeting. My thoughts and um, <coughs> just probably have to make it get rid of all the animals without the barn permit, and then it's kind of silly to chase that small amount of money. But that's what we got to do. All right, where we at? Bailey Street barn permit. On uh, Bailey Street, uh, someone has a cow. Again, um, it's confined to a small space. We have learned that it's a bull. A bull? A bull. A bull, yeah. Okay, someone has a bull. <laughs> and I guess uh, it's become a nuisance from its uh, mooing or whatever they do during the day and night when they're hungry. And um, this was another person that was supposed to get a barn permit. And they also had chickens. That's a tight, tight quarters over there, right? That's ridiculous. Bro. Well, you know, the lot is approximately 0.4 acres, but what the cow has is like half the stage. With the, the, the area, the pen for the, it's, it's a very small pen. Yeah, anyway, I think um, um, it's, it's, for a, it's <laughs> not, not, it's not legal for a horse. So. And then it's uh, the odors. It actually was very clean. But really? it doesn't matter. What are they doing with the... Because each, each barn permit should have some kind of manure plan, right? What are they That's doing? part of the, the barn permit. It's the source of water and where you, what you're doing with the manure. Yeah. Yep. They expressed their intentions with this? We, they have not replied to our request. Again, we have, all we sent them was a, hey, we, you know, you have animals, please apply for a barn permit. And that would have identified what kind of animals and the manure plan and all that. They haven't, we haven't heard from them. Maybe just a little uh, more pressing from Stacy or I did. think I think down the road we probably ought to meet with the uh, Agricultural Commission and discuss uh, what kind of animals will we allow in that dense of a district. Maybe chickens. Uh, I, I understand it's a right to farm community. However, there is certain minimum requirement that that's just healthy for an animal and the space uh, that uh, size for a right exactly for a bull is completely I believe one absurd. acre is what USD I'm thinking the only thing that should be allowed uh, in the village I mean, is maybe chickens it's, it's just it's exercise mind boggling it's still... want some chickens fine a, a bull and a that's, that's, <laughs> even that's, even like did, did, did it have any kind of shelter it's yeah it has a shed because even with the wind it's and just, stuff they block themselves from you want to make sure that Safe and well. to top it off, there's an in-ground pool on this property. So if the, if the bull gets out of its enclosure, there's you likelihood it the may go in the pool. Right. You can, so, uh, you know, it's, it's just... Uh, that's from New Hampshire. Or if it gets loose in general. So we'll, we'll get Stacy out. That little space? On these things? Uh, yeah, but what do we want to do? I said we sent them a letter saying file for a barn permit and they ignored it. Do they allow it to like so do we go send out of that little pen? pen? No. And there's like chickens in there with it. Yeah, well, we don't have a fine structure. We do have uh, a fine structure. Well, well, we didn't get, I mean, we could just, you know, it's, help it's them in you a, to get a permit. Yeah, I'll show you. And, um, yeah. The, the, our regular uh, fine structure has that nuisances. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I will go over it again, and we'll get those fines from... Uh, because the mooing is a nuisance. Right. The chickens aren't a nuisance, but it's well, the, the noise. The chickens. Yeah, but I think in the order, I mean, in, in our regs say, anyone that has control over property must um, keep it as sanitary. And, but I think it says that there's something to the effect that they have to follow the regulations. 
it's a nice barn, a nice little area. Oh, it's right? very clean, very no, I mean, like very the nice. little barn area. You just, but small. If well, there was the, a goat in there, it would have been funny. Yeah. It's really small. For, yeah, for, for a boy. Uh, Ronald, you want a table to fill next meeting, then we'll figure it out if it's not. Yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd, like like, I'd like to pull up the USD regs and our uh, recommendations and maybe can right, incorporate exactly. that because. Stacy was supposed to. Just looking to out for the welfare of the animal, too. That, that. Stacy was going to talk to Bristol Aggie because um, they have information on this, but again, she's not here to give her update. But, yeah, um, horses I know of, but not, I don't know much about cows. But in the time being, they should up. still apply for something so we know. Yeah, barn for me, yeah. <laughs> so I would sell that up. An author, author saying it's a requirement in town to have a permit. Um, Send a certified uh, um, Failure to act is will result in fines may result in fines are you making that a motion i am second well set motion made and seconded uh, all in favor aye aye opposed okay we'll let you catch up caught up send, send it certified mail and give them like 14 <laughs> days or something to at least make contact we'll give them until whatever the date of our next meeting is yeah twice the 14 you know whatever well, we got to talk about our meeting schedule, but no. Yeah. Talk to us about twenty one seventy six plus. And there should be fourteen days from receipt of the letter. That's why I sent it certified. So that way they can't say they didn't get it. Mm -hmm. uh, A lot of stuff happens in this little town. <laughs> 2176 Pleasant Street. Animals. Um, you guys remember this house? This is um, the one we had to clean out. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been living in a hotel. They have gone in and they have done an amazing amount of work. They have thrown out 98% of the stuff that was in the house. Um, they've ripped out all the flooring and the kitchens and, and living room and um, they've rebuilt the back stairs. Uh, They've inspected the furnace and the electric is, you know, they, like, they're doing everything they're supposed to do. Um, they said they were ready to move in. I went in there yesterday. The only thing is, because they ripped out the floors, we need to have, like, some kind of washable floor put back down in the kitchen before we can let them back in. So yeah, right now that's right the only... Now what, subfloor? Like a plywood? Yeah, sub, well, the, uh, right now it's just the plywood, so okay, they yeah. have to put they a something. washable surface. Yeah, they need um, something, yeah. So that's the only thing left holding them back from moving in. So as soon as that's done, well, Wasn't there an the area order. of the house that they bought it up? Or they fixed that already? There is. Um, sorry. This is annoying. Um, Take your time. Yeah. You can always go back to the video. Plenty of that. That Let's takes a while. Video huh? Tape. Huh? Let's go um, to the video tape. <laughs> well, I was, I was going to say the tape, or we, could re we should get a recording so, for nights like this. Uh, this property is a three-family house. The first floor in the back is a, a single apartment. That is being boarded off and there's two entrances to that. They are not allowed to use that, go into that for any reason at this point in time. The first floor is another unit. When you go upstairs and you go to the right is another kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, and that's the, the third bedroom unit. That one's all clean and ready to go. And I say the, the, the front one is, it's the back one that is being blocked off. And they, we will not allow them into there. They, they are going to have to do some serious like building permit work in order to be able to get back in. And then you said there was something with the basement it as well. Is, uh, basement was packed? It was. It's not anymore. <coughs> oh, great. So Again, they threw out about 98% of what was So they're there. ready to move in? It was, it was something like 20 dumpsters or something. It it's going to be a single family. It's on record as a single family. So I don't know how it evolve to a three family but well they may not be able to get back to a three family again no, it's not a it may be family. able to be a two family or whatever and that's through the building department process too for some of this yeah. so um but right now we're more important with getting the person back into their home nice so well moving on to 3f north dayton health concerns which is the ongoing problem with uh I don't know, I call them rats. I guess that's what we can call them. Since our last meeting, we would discuss this. Um, some uh, snap traps have been purchased. Uh, Tom Berry was uh, looking for where to put them. And basically, I think it's up there in back of uh, Bedford Street, where that road is. Um, 
course, I haven't heard from Stacy or Tom lately regarding this. Uh, did he put any out that you know of? Well, knowing that Stacy was going to be gone for a week, I don't think he wanted to set the traps with nobody to check on. And so I think oh, yeah. he held off on setting them until Stacy's back because it's going to take every day somebody's going to be there checking on them. Smart. So, um, and, okay. you know, I can do it a couple days and Stacy can do it a couple, but without her here, it would have been difficult. So I, I don't think the traps have been set as of this point in time. Okay. Are we for our next meeting again? We'll try it again, yeah. Okay, we have uh, finally, I believe we have our kennel license renewal letter and our dog license renewal letter uh, finished. It's been reviewed by town council. He's happy with it. And uh, as far as the legalities of it go, everything is in order. I, I know that Rods has sent them out to all of us. I don't know if you've had a chance to read them. The uh, letters on oh, kennel. I didn't get to read it. Lessons we know or the. I did not. I don't think, I don't think I got it. I don't think do we have copies? If we do, we can pass them out. We can table this. This isn't going to be effective till next yeah. year anyway. Yeah, I don't think I. But we can. I, I know I we can it. act on it next meeting. Should be both in, in there. Well, let's say one's kennel and one's dog's kennel. That's one. They were attached, right? One kennel and, and one dog. Yeah, I don't know. She put it all together. Yes. Yeah, yeah. okay. The reason we've come up with this is because most of our reminder letters go unnoticed or unresponsive. We estimate there's four to six hundred dogs within the town that are probably not licensed. Um, we don't know that for fact, but that's that's an estimate. They every year they have to send out three to four hundred follow-up letters at 55 cents a pop. So we, we decided to put something together that had a little more teeth that may or may not bring the people in, but um, it was written in accordance with Mass General Law uh, as far as violations and sections and so forth go. You were right, the only thing we need to do is a adopt a regulation citing uh, this particular section and the fines involved. It does not have to go to town meeting to adopt Mass General Law. We just need a regulation. Yeah. Our regulations it? read as... You want to write it? Yeah. Okay. So it just says... Uh, um, <laughs> Because the way it's written already, it says um, rules and regulations, no, bylaws and regulations. I think it already covers it, but I'll, I'll put something. Yeah. yeah, we can follow I'll up on it. And it'll give you time to look at the letters and... Uh, is that all right? Are you yeah. Okay. Because it, it falls under our non-criminal disposition. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. Think and I'm then right. when you read non-criminal disposition, it says bylaws and regulations. So all our regulations fall under that, and any bylaws falls under that. It's pretty much a blanket. If you didn't have that in place, the word regulation, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to find. Yeah, I'll have to for review that also. But <coughs> it looks pretty good. Right? You good. Know, I'm not going to I read it. There's two, two of them. I did. You're a fast reader. I am. <laughs> Actually, when I, can I keep it on? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, That's yours. Oh, thanks. So, are we doing anything to approve the letters, or are we going to wait till the regulations in place before we do the letters? Like I said, that that's in place already. I could just 
Well, we can approve the letters yeah. if, if, okay. if they both read them. Is there a motion to approve the letters? Make a motion to approve the letters as, <laughs> as prepared by the town council. Second. A motion made and seconded to approve the letters uh, regarding kennel license renewal and dog license renewal. That was approved by town council. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? That motion carries. Thank you very much. So we did G and H together? Yes. Effectively? Yes. Temporary food permit fee waiver request for Audrey Wood. So who's uh, Miss Audrey Wood? Miss Audrey Wood is Creative Confections. Um, this woman is the one who does chocolate that she pours into molds and caramel and toffee. So her food is um, not TCS. Right and uh, she is in Norton and she's got her residential kitchen license there and she's provided us with a homeowner's insurance for insurance. We made her get allergen awareness, I believe, and she went and got her allergen awareness. Okay. Yep. Um, so but what she said to us was, well, you know, I'm paying whatever it was, $50 to be a vendor there, $30, whatever the fee was to be there. She goes, and then your fee's 35. She says, I'd have to sell like $100 in products just to, to break even. And she was asking for us to weigh, reduce the fee. Um, was the event? It's November 3rd. Where? Oh, the fee for participating is $80. It's, um, it's at Arujo's, the, um, oh, the Lions November Art Festival. Okay. So, um, so she's asking for a reduction. Her words are, it's a one day event and the fee for participating is already $80. Considering the majority of my candy is priced at less than $15, it'll take quite a few sales just to cover the cost of being there. For these reasons, I'm requesting reduction in the fee. And I told her we would discuss it at our next meeting. Is, is Arujo's paying a fee for the food? For the, for the event? No. Just the vendors, all the vendors that are gonna be there. I think the only way that would work if Arujo's or someone did as a blanket, like one, like and as you're there, like taste the did. almost like that. Besides that, if who's but, gonna who's gonna inspect that, and how who's gonna pay for that person to go well, out? Well, that's that's the thing. So you've got, um, you know, actually, I don't know how many vendors. Is gonna so be just say, I'm thinking, just say, Rujo said like this. I'm gonna have like five vendors there, and I'll pay the one day event, it's a temporary event. Then while you're out there, you're inspecting all of them. But, besides, but we would need to have everybody's allergen for the individual. Everyone has to be lined it's up. like we do with SurfSafe. They paid one fee for the event and they inspected everybody. How many food vendors do they have? I don't think it was many. I want to say last year it was only... They always have a couple, right? A couple. Yeah, like two. But bes besides that, they're, if they're charging yeah. 80 and that's the steep. town still has to cover that's you steep. to go out there and inspect. No, that's not our problem. I no know. Kidding. It's yeah. really... I right. think we're, go we're stepping I've, into... Uh, I've, I've heard this was... was a Outside of here, an organization is charging $365 to $375 for a vendor to be there. And then a temporary car was $25. Whatever the, the vendor charges, that, that's between, that, that has nothing to do with us. That's, yeah. you know, so if a Rujas charges eight, that, that's between her and them. That's completely separate, you know. Because the town's got to pay you to go out right. to do the inspection. And that's one of you guys. And it's, on a, and it's on a weekend. Yep. Right? So just imagine. Are there other food vendors that are going to be up there? Do we know? No, as of now, no. But the other, the other thing that's here is we've got pop culture is going to be at the Dighton Fall Show at Bristol Aggie. And there's supposed to be five vendors there. There's supposed to be two food trucks. Somebody's doing fried dough. Somebody's doing you can see how they did it last year. No, she's not a non-profit or anything, correct? No, no. neither one of these are. No. no. But she's the same way. The stuff's all pre-prepared and all that, and it's... But that's the same thing you still got to check. I know. I'm just saying they both were kind of the same way. They're going, hey, yeah. you know, the fees are getting higher and higher for these vendors to be at these places, and they were just saying, is there some way you can give me a break? So, put it in front of the board. That's all. Yeah, I unfortunately think you can't. 
or must the only way if the board ever agreed to do it like the taste of Dighton. One, one establishment covers all of them. That's the only way. But even then, you're going to be there a lot longer well, doing those inspections. I'm going to well, it's going to take one hour normally. You're going to be there walking around all the vendors. That was a Dighton event put on by the Friends of the Library, another Dighton yeah. organization. So that's why it was like that, yeah. So, you know, these here are just going into bad territory, I think, would. Yeah, I guess it's a price of doing business. And we're not and, waiting and for non that are giving the money, like the post, you know. One permit, we should even look at that and say, scholarships. So we'll give them a break, but we can't charge, I don't think we should continue charging the same fee. We yeah. should probably, you know, it's whatever thirty five dollars in the beginning, then five dollars each vendor or something like that, you know. So but as far as these two go, uh now pop culture. Well let's work on I first. The request for Audrey Wood. Uh is there a motion up or down on that one? Yeah, I make a motion to deny the request. Second it. Uh motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. aye. I'll also participate and say aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Three J, pop culture, it's the same yeah. question. But that's at the Dighton Falls show, like I say, there's gonna be five vendors there. What's, We're, what are they, are they just there as a food vendor? Are they giving the money back? Or what's the deal with that? I know they're a food vendor. I don't know if they're giving any money to. I mean, you'd reduce the rate to the nonprofit if it was the money going back to the school. Yeah, I don't know how that works. Like scholarships or something, you know what I mean? We can get an answer to that if you want to make a motion that way so that we can find out and, and then do it. Because that show is next Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Does any of the profit go to yeah, I don't the know. school? I'm sure they're paying the school. Was that There's event? space, probably. Right, there's yeah, probably a space vendor as well. They're giving a percentage back to the school, the Boosters Club, or something like that, for scholarship money or whatever. Yeah. Then they do a reduced rate, but not free. So we have another meeting before the event, so we're not going to make a motion. There is another meeting before that? No, no, there isn't. It's, it's next, next Friday, weekend. so it's only for business yeah, And I guess away, last so. year we didn't do anything, right? It was just the way it was. I'll make a motion to deny the request at this time. I'll, s I'll second it. Hmm. Okay, motion's made and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Thank you. That request is denied. So we have signed the, we're going to, once oh, we get the check yeah. from her, we'll write, write it in, but, but nobody's going to be here to. Um, you can ask her for more information next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm asking you to sign it. Right. When we get the check, we'll write the fee in and then issue it, but you're not going to be here before. Yes. Yeah. Unless anybody wants to go inspect it next Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and if Friday is more of a setup day, Saturday is more of a food day. So. Talk to you more about it next right. week. I can probably go Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, these people, when they request, they should come in and talk to us, I think. You know, when, uh, but. All right, well, we can suggest that to them next time. Mm -hmm. Was there two cities or just nope, one? Just one. Oh. I don't know if you have public input. Uh, uh, you, you, you up? Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to take the agenda out of order. This gentleman. Okay. Second. Oh. We don't want you to wait forever. Yeah. No, 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 that's fine, man. You know you guys have a bunch of stuff on the agenda. Um, I'm actually here. Um, I want to ask some of the pictures for you guys. I don't know if I'm going to Name for the record? Um, George Gulak. So I'm on here on, um, I can't find the pictures. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, take your time. 
I just took them on my way here. Jeepers creepers. Uh, I'm not a... It'll be the time. last picture. I'm not, I'm, yeah, I'm not a tech, <laughs> technical type guy. Well, he's doing that. You can read Well, that. I don't even... Oh, it's boy. the thing that you already read before okay. you got this. So, uh, anyway, if you may not even need this. I'm, on, I'm here on behalf of um, George Goulart. He wasn't able to uh, appear tonight. However, he Wait, so lived... you were George Goulart. I am not. I'm here on behalf of George Goulart. Okay. okay. Um, he just wasn't able to uh, be present tonight. Your name so for the record? Robert Pattinger. Um, George's son-in-law. Okay. Um, he lives at 303 Prospect Street. And... Um, Tony Roderick is attempting to, he's already purchased property that went to auction um, adjacent to his property, which is on directly the corner of Brook Street and Allen. We want to hold that thought for a minute. I mean, absolutely. You have to and grab the plan, then you have it to look at. Because he's okay. we have we have a file ongoing with this, so yeah, we'll sure. probably but be just, able to give so you. Know, we won't be able to make any. We can, we can just we can, can just listen to you and we can't make decisions. Agenda, yeah. it wasn't no, 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 absolutely. Just so I, you know. Yep, yeah, he was very concerned that he yeah. wasn't able to appear tonight. That's fine. And we can we can hear you what's going on, then probably put on the next meeting. But we can't make any decisions because it's not on the agenda. Well, that's not going to make me look good for my father-in-law. Well, yeah, you're, it's, 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 you're doing a good job it's, so far. It's, it's the law. Yeah. Unfortunately, state, state law. It was a, yeah. a joke. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, he'll be here for the following meeting. Okay. So these plans have been filed with our office about 20, 30 days ago. So he claims. And my, my review has not been completed yet. Um, actually, I kind of finished review. I got a letter. We came in on September 16th. All right. It's just new construction. Got You're it. familiar with okay. where it is, right? Are you guys familiar with where it is on the uh, yeah. plan? Yeah. Okay, here I actually have some um, pictures. This originally was a wooded area. Are you guys familiar with this entire situation? Um, uh, we know. Oh, uh, okay. Do you know, uh, where, it I know where it is? Okay, we'll yeah. I know so, where it is, and that's all I know. Yeah. All right, so yeah. this was a uh, entirely wooded area, and mm -hmm. I'll submit this picture here so you guys can pass it along. And um, this went to auction. It was sold for under $10,000 or whatever. However, this is wetlands, so actually abuts the property owned by um, Somerset Water Department. He went in and he cleared all the property. As a result of him clearing the property over the past, I don't know, six, eight months, now we have runoff, or he has runoff, I'm sorry, I was speaking on behalf of George, has runoff that's going into his property. So if you're on the, on the corner of Brook and Elm, under the north there. Yeah. On the north side, the runoff naturally goes down just south of that, approximately 100, 125 yards, is the river. And here's the runoff that is now heading into the river. Um, here's some additional pictures of that runoff for you guys. So you clear trees it, within the wetlands issue? The yes, wetlands he line? did. Okay. Um, we also have an additional issue on top of that. So just to, to so interrupt for a second. All sure. The, all yeah. the, the runoff the wetlands issues, that's for the Conservation Commission. They no, I understand. I was, so I'm, just, I'm just clear. No, uh, you'll have to bring this up with uh, them as well. No, uh, absolutely. The we, we're just trying to dot our eyes, cross our T's. Actually, I, I believe they're meeting tonight. They have 7.30. 7.30. I believe here. That, they, uh, right here. I was supposed to come back. They, I was just advised to come here. Yeah, okay. So, yep. again, I'm interjecting only because he filed for a perk gap. He was told he had to stay over 100 feet away with the parks, which you can see the test holes were done outside of 100 feet from the wetlands. As mm -hmm. they were delineated, I'm not saying the lines right or wrong. Oh, like, oh, the way sure. they were delineated, we stayed over 100 feet away. The soils were acceptable, but you can see that the water table was very shallow. It was like less than two feet. And um, the whole thing is a big giant mound. So, um, it, 
So that's that's oh. the involvement I have had in it. I believe they went to the zoning board uh, for the location of the house, and um, I think they were filed with the conservation already. I mean, the hearing might be tonight, or it might have already gone past. I don't know exactly. I think I know it's conservation tonight. is probably discussing this. Tonight. Yeah, I think it's tonight. So All right, at seven thirty, um, here's just one of the issue that. Um, has concerned my father-in-law, George Goulart, is that since the land has been cleared, Tony Roderick has also brought in, the, I can bring it over too, if, may I? Yeah, I'm gonna say this is conservation again, because I know what you're oh, gonna sure. say. Oh, okay. sure, I know what you're gonna yeah. say. So he's already brought in Phil onto this property. Oh, I'm sorry, onto this property. And I took these on the way here. Yeah. So he's already brought Phil in. And um, this is completely characteristic of, which I, I shouldn't say is kind of biased, but the, the, it's what he does. And sure. he's already backfilling that property as a result of the wetlands. Um, and even so, uh, who would that be over here? Probably. He's All right, over here. May I see the map? All right, in here. That's an isolated wetland. Then there are wetlands at the rear of the lot, adjacent to the river. So oh, where's okay. the corner of Brook and Elm? All right, so Elm. So he's already backfilled. I have actually married, um, mentioned it. It's 70 feet this way, and 40 feet this way. So he's backfilled this corner which is actually pushing the water onto this. Well, that's where the septic's gonna go. Oh, no, I no, I completely understand that. But what I'm saying is, is he doing, is he's he already, already back on the cooler, right? This plan, I completed my review and the letter was gonna be going out tomorrow for my review. I do need some changes but to he the said, plan. He said there's being work done already here. He, all he's doing is dumping fill. Yes, he is. But as a result of that, it's not in the wetlands. So in the wetlands, just, or like, what, maybe again, yeah. I, I'm not. So hold on so, one second. Just so when we did the parks, there was no evidence of filled wetlands in the area where we were doing our park testing. If there were, then this would have been different. Which the park the tests are actually literally like ten feet off the road. They are close to the street. So, yes, they are. Um, it's right off the road. He does them, so he was the one. Yeah, no, no, that's fair. Um, but like again, we didn't indicate, find any evidence of filled wetlands, um, and we were over 100 feet from the flagged wetlands. If there's an issue with the, the wetland being bigger than what's shown on the plan, or, or what, and we've got evidence of it, that's for the Conservation Commission to um, decide. I don't know any, if they went to an ANRAD process to confirm the wetlands. Any, or, any of this work, like clearing the trees within the wetlands, the possibility of dropping fill, concern that they might be pushing the fill and starting to fill, or possibly sure. could. Phil Wellens, all that's conservation. We have no jurisdiction over that. So. Uh, that is perfectly fine. I was unaware of that. I was advised to come here at yep. this time. Yep, it's at 7.30 30 with the conservation. I mean, this is definitely, I mean, just looking at these pictures, there just definitely looks like there's some wetlands issues going on here, so. Yeah, I mean, even yeah. prior to his fill, his sump pump might go off on his stone. Now the sump pump in the basement is right. like constantly running because he's dropped, yeah. you know, the, I think it's 13 dump truck loads of fill in there, which I don't believe, but, but, and it's but, completely characteristic of Tony Roger. But Todd, I don't understand why he's dropping fill when he's got to do the site work first. Where, where the, the stumps per, aren't even Where the perk is, like before we issue the permit, <clears> there should be no work. I see you getting rid of trees and stumps, but to bring in fill but where, this where still, you're yeah, going, he's saying it's right around here. I don't know if that's the case. Yes, this, that's this is what you're going to be removing. Not. Right, so he's still going to have to dig out everything. If he piles it right on top of the septic, he's going to move it all the way to dig the hole. So he's just... I don't want to see why he's bringing it in to remove it. That's a question only he can answer. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I, it's, it's, not, it's not illegal him to for him to dump dirt to move it again. He as, as long I know, as right. it's, it's it's over, He may be here at 730 for the conservation. I will gladly come back. I mean... Yeah, I... Jeez, he... It sounds no, not, he, not he built park, four houses on we don't, we just don't Marsh Lane and on Pleasant Street, yeah. and now, I don't know, I'm just trying to help my father a lot. It so. looks like your pictures that's might okay. indicate the wetland is bigger than what's on that plan, but that's oh, it absolutely only is. for the Conservation Commission. Yeah. Also, we had a um, representative, I do have the information in my vehicle, um, 
of some endangered species that were in that area as well. Conservation. Yeah, um, yeah so yeah. come back at 7.30. They'll be here, yeah. yeah. For conservation. Thank yeah. you very much yeah. for your time. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, it's inside of our jurisdiction. Hey, you has got to keep the wife happy, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take care. Thank you, guys. We appreciate the info, though, because at least then, you know, should this go forward and, and yes, our health right. agents yes. give you the panel to get out, you know. All right, thank you, guys. Yeah. Does the soil board get involved if he doesn't have a permit and he's moving the bill? It was a, depends how much bill. Yeah. yeah. So, anyhow, this, this review was going to go out tomorrow. Is that finished? So, big that law? Is that the one where he said there was a house there before? There was an old foundation. I saw it. There was remnants of a foundation there. So I'm guessing that might have been part of his argument with the zoning board. Was that the house or a barn? Uh -oh. Nobody knows what was there back I, Yeah, there all you can see is stones right? in a square now. Mm -hmm. so. There must be some wreckage, right? Uh, it's, it was an old foundation. But. All right. Out of your control, too. Yep. Yep. Back to 3K? Yep. You having fun yet, Seth? Animal it's project update, stuff, you got huh? any information on that or are we gonna wait for Stacy? Uh, Stacy or Jim, and they're both, uh, both gone. Okay, okay. we'll table that one also, until next time. Maybe the schedule. Let's pull your calendars. All right, upcoming Board of Health <coughs> meeting schedule. I think most of the things that are, half of the things that are on here tonight are gonna be brought up. Um, it doesn't latch. Our next meeting. Um, hopefully, we'll have a lot more information with our animal control officer here. Any more public input? All right. Expenditures. Wait a minute. Are we doing the meeting schedule? Are we doing the schedule? Yeah. Is that a schedule? Are we doing yeah, one I just, I, one I, month? Yeah, right? I just yeah, talked about it. Oh, did you mention that we're doing it? Monthly. Twice a month or one monthly? Oh, that, that part of it, yes. Yeah. Uh, and we're meeting October 23rd. <coughs> yeah, we're going to do that one. Actually, after the first of the year, we're probably going to go on one. Oh, it's September 25th. <laughs> right? Oh, we already did September. That's fine. Yeah, we're in uh, October. I will Sorry. probably not be here. Never mind. Never mind. Wrong week. Never mind. We're, we're second and fourth. We're second and fourth. So if you look ahead at the calendar. November and December are off. So anyway. the, Right, the November the fourth of the fourth thir uh, Wednesday from November is the night before Thanksgiving, so I will not be here. Yep. <laughs> right, so. and, and the fourth is Christmas, so we wouldn't be doing that one. We could. So, so after the first of the year, I'll send, I'll send a notice to the board of selectmen. Yeah. Um, we'll basically be doing one a month for the next two months anyway, just yep. because the holidays. So. Um, yeah, so because of the holidays, we're doing. Right, but you're suggesting go to one meeting a month, moving past that for January, February, March. Correct. I, I don't want. I would prefer to send a letter saying effective January. <coughs> we'll, well I think it's going to be effective. Well, you could do November effective 1st. January, because we might still have two in case something comes up. We can well, two regular me regular yeah. meetings. regularly scheduled. Oops. Regularly and then any any important business that comes to emergency situations, no, situations, you know. But the regular meeting. I mean, yeah, certainly if you know, say. 214 Pearl Street needs something. I have no problem scheduling a meeting outside to handle that specific issue. Say, you know, even say we have bids coming in for hazardous waste day. If, yep. it's, if it, anything's yeah. time sensitive, I have no problem coming in or handling, emergency you know, orders, whatever it is. 15, yeah. 30 minutes, handle that issue. But regular meetings, you know, here in the reports. The only thing I'd like to see is to get by the operate uh, procedures and policies manual. That we're going to create, but that might be workshops or that whatever. Could be but workshops. That's not a regular meeting, so no. to speak. So right now, if we follow the regular schedule, it's going to be October twenty third, November thirteenth, December eleventh. Yes, and then if we stick to one a month and come January, that's why it might be come November first. It's one meeting a month because yeah. of the holiday, but whatever, it doesn't matter. The that's way the way the next two months fall, it's once. But do we want to have another meeting in October? Do we want to stick with one on the twenty third, or do we want to go to the thirtieth or something like that? You know, I would say we have to have the twenty third. I think we have twenty third. I think just because Stacy wasn't here, Jim wasn't here, okay. there's a lot of table things that we just can't yeah. take action on or discuss. Okay, sorry. No, no don't be sorry. Thanks. Part of my job. You guys don't mind if we go to one meeting a month, right? No. After January. I'll let it, I'll I'd rather, I mean, a lot of the, the yeah. general business, yeah. I'd rather have one meeting that's a little longer than, than two meetings, you know, that are 
much order. But, but again, in, in case of emergency, we could I have no problem coming in, you know, special circumstances, emergency situations, whatever it may be. Um, okay, so I'll let it to them and say one, one meeting a month, and then please note because of the holidays in November, December, it'll be the same. Yeah, we'll, we'll think of something. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking of meeting schedule, but that's the agenda. I was thinking of the wrong thing. Yeah, so. I mean, Jack, you can maybe all kind of come up with some kind of ideas and then we'll after. But right now, we're sticking to our meeting. current schedule, which is October 23rd and then yeah. November 13th. Yes. Yeah. 13th? Yeah, because yeah, we've been the 7th, the 6th. Yeah. So, yeah. And so we'll stick to those and then we can put together some kind of memo and you guys can look at it. So, okay. Is there any. Public input? Hold on. Public input? None. Payroll and bills? Payroll and bills. We had, uh, oh, on the pink bags, we made $33.31. Yes. So, and payroll. Out of the Imagine yep. what we saved on, on yeah, tonnage. Yeah, no, on the tonnage. Yeah. Well, they give us the tonnage here somewhere. I think you guys made that on me alone. <laughs> uh, we bought some business cards this past month. Uh, it was a ton and a half. It was 3,300 pounds. So, so take that 33 and change and add it to the ton and treat too. What, well, $100 a ton or whatever, right? So, and it's out of the waste stream. Bucks. We bought the rat traps. We bought um, some new business cards now that we have new email addresses and phone numbers and address. Kind of had to do it. And then included for Laurie. She got cards also. And we have payroll as a total of 5148 and yeah, that was 914. Then for the end of September, we had 4,200 in payroll and 71,000 in bills paid because that included Borges trucking. And we had a bag, uh, delivery of bags from Mansfield Paper to the tune of 15 grand, 16 grand, somewhere in that vicinity. That was another horror show. <laughs> yeah, we don't go there. <laughs> they tried to deliver the bags here instead of at the DPW and they wouldn't bring him down there. And Tom Ferry's like, well, we don't have a um, forklift here, so good luck. Yeah. <laughs> and the guy's like, oh. Are you leaving us? No, I'm No. <laughs> yeah, we're almost done. Any of these, the, um, you're going to the conference, MHOA? No, that was, I was going to, we were okay. going to talk about that. Okay. <clears throat> Under agent's report. Ready? I'm ready. So we have no animal control. No, health agent report. All right. Um, a bunch of little things. Uh, number one, um, I went out to inspect the um, craft show at Dighton Community Church, and I was there doing jam suite or whatever. And um, then I said, "Well, they got all this food in the kitchen. Let me take a quick peek in the kitchen." And they were serving um, stuff out of crock pots, and they were hot dogs and baked goods and everything else. And they said, "Well, you know, you got a kitchen here," and I'm like. Hey, can I look around? And I started looking around, and there were some things that were a little bit lacking, like no hand sink labeled, no hot water, you know, that kind of stuff. So I told the lady, I said, you need a permit from us via kitchen. And sent her the application, and she's putting it together, and I think she had to take her allergen awareness, and they got to get the hot water tank fixed, but they have no other events coming right away. So that's that. We know St. Nicholas also has a permit for the kitchen, but there's other kitchen, there's other churches in town and I don't know if anybody knows that there's kitchens in them and if we should be doing anything about any of them. If Generally we, I've always made churches get a food permit. I usually just inspect them once a year because it's minimal use and what it is. Um, generally not open for public consumption. Um, and I've generally not charged a fee for it. So but it's just so that way we have the information on record and we do put eyes on them once a year. 
I have no problems waiving the fees and all that. Um, but I mean, like this event here, they were serving food to the public. And they advertised? And it was advertising. Yeah. Normally when they advertise, I, I would follow Matt's uh, lead there. When they don't, uh, potluck events are allowed. Well, that's, so, that's so like in-house. Yeah. yeah, so it's, it's like your own family. Even stuff. though they have their kitchens, if they, after mass, go downstairs and have a social hour, it's off limits. But however, if they advertise to the public and are selling to the public, that's when um, it's gray where you can have them either do the same thing. Uh, since they're nonprofit, post something saying it hasn't been inspected um, and, and list all the allergens or get a, get a full-blown permit. But you'd have to really find out who's doing what. I say if, if they have a kitchen, just make them get a permit. I have no, again, I have no problem. All the churches waive the fee. It's yep. just. So, what I'd like to do is send a letter out to yeah. all the churches in town yeah. saying, hey, if you got a kitchen, you need a permit. Um, if you want to waive the fee, you know, write a letter to us requesting the fee be waived and, and, and we can move forward. That's all I was looking for. I wasn't saying, hey, I want to shut everybody down or anything like that. Yeah. I, just, I think we yeah. need to send them a letter and get them. Yeah, and then put it in there. Is it a, a, and if they're on a well, we got to get the well water tested. Is it a public event or a, just for the congregation? Or? Right. Like I say, I don't know what all these churches do for events. So we can ask. Yeah, we'll freaking find out. Because if they say, we only do social hour at the for for all, coffee for in-house hour, people. Yeah. So. Okay. That was easy. Um, the Falmouth Conference. I started going through what was at the conference. Roz and I went through it for what things that I would want to do and not do. And I started marking with red for what I want to do. And a lot of the stuff, it didn't, didn't interest me as much no. as I thought. Um, there was a few things I got with the red asterisks or whatever that I'm like, oh, I would definitely do that. But there's only like one asterisk. The rest of them were, all right, I don't want to do that one or that one. So I guess I'm going to that one. It didn't interest me. I think I'd rather just do the Holiday Inn in Taunton for the, the annual thing there, um, is what I'm saying. So, unless you guys see something that you, that you think I should be there for, I, Roz and I didn't see it. I wasn't overly thrilled. You know what I did? I did the Yankee Conference this year, and thought it was awesome. Really? Because in the past, you've said they've been... Yeah, and I was kind of, and I looked at what they were offering, and I was like, last year, right? and I went, and I was blown away how good it was. So... Yeah, I, I really, I, I, as far as I'm going, I did I looked at that and I kind of felt the same thing. I need a couple extra hours for my RS, so. See, I don't need the LTRS, I need the SESI, and it's five a year. The Taunton Holiday Inn would get that, too. So. I'm just going for one day. Yeah, if I go, I'm going to go one hours. day. Also. I still got to sign that's up for this thing. Too. So you guys are okay with it? Well, that's why. I and mean, it's a long drive and all that. So yeah. if you guys are okay with me not going, I say, if you said no, yeah, no I may not go, I see. Okay. Oh, we have had a couple of people ask us if the Board of Health is going to cancel Halloween this year because of Triple E. No. No? Okay. It's personal can't responsibility. Cancel. Can't cancel Halloween. You feel strongly that you don't want to be out? I'm okay. I, I, don't, I don't believe in it either, but if I can't. I think if, you, if the Board says it, then I can. Um, so... Uh, Perk test records, Roz has been making great strides. We're almost done with the perk records. We've got like one year left for putting them all in the files, except for prior to 1990. And so that's kind of not a top priority. She's working on pumping records now. We had for the landfill inspection, the company doing it said, hey, we want to see all the real reports. We spent a couple hours in the vault going through and pulling out everything. It was all over the place and we organized it. Now we're scanning it all in so that it's all in one place instead of in cargo boxes. Um, Board of Health regulations, we approved them, um, but we haven't mailed them into the state yet. Um, and so uh, it just kind of hit me that we hadn't done that. Um, I think it was yeah, Robert they, Casper they, in West Bridgewater said, oh, did you mail those in? And pretty much they, they file it, that's it. Right, so but we need to mail it in, so yeah. Ross has got the letter, so we're gonna mail that in. And I and I will make that binder. All it is, is grab all our stuff and put it in a binder. Yeah, we just look how many uh, just all the tabs. different paragraphs we want. You know, yeah. What, what top? Well, one. I'll show you what the. I'll send. I'll send them something. What yeah. Oz looks like in Lakeville, where it has all the tabs. It's pretty. Yeah. You pretty much just pretty much yeah. flip it to the tab and use it as your resource. Yeah. Um, but I said we just we got to send it into the state to be covered. Um, do we want to talk about the um, the invoices that? Um, yeah, it was uh, it was brought up. We we could. Um, 
the expenses for the incident on uh, Maple Swamp was somewhere in the vicinity of four thousand dollars. It's three thousand three hundred. Three thousand. Okay. Yeah, Ross and I added them up. Slightly today. over three thousand three hundred. Uh, we were asked how we felt about uh, looking, seeking reimbursement from the owner of the property. Yeah. Uh, it's a touchy subject, but I don't. I kind of agree that the taxpayers of the town should not be responsible for the bills, which is what it's come down to. I agree. So, do you agree? I agree. So now I would entertain a motion to recommend to the Board of Selectmen that we seek reimbursement from the owner of the property. Um, for the Board of Health, the Board of Health or the Board of Selectmen to seek reimbursement? Board of Selectmen seeks a uh, recommendation to the Board of Selectmen that they seek the town through the Board of Selectmen seeks reimbursement. So moved. Second. Okay, that motion made. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, hold on. Well, Ross would have had that done already. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> he gave me the thumbs up. He, he wanted to give me something else. <laughs> Um, no. So, if you guys remember, 2117 William Street, the red barn at the corner of Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, with the wall? Yeah, with the wall. Um, but the discussion earlier was whether or not it was repair or not. Because the building had two rooms that used as bedrooms, and we talked about it, they could be a repair. Um, since that point in time, they've now put the concrete on, and now they're putting up the two-story. And it's separated, right? It's not it, connected. It, there is some, it looks like there's some kind of gap. I don't know if about that's a four supposed foot to be there maybe. Um, it's about a four foot gap between the barn and the house. But the problem I have is that he's increasing the building from 1,928 square feet to 2,589 square feet. It's a 34% increase in the square footage. The floor plans for the house show two bedrooms with three bathrooms. There's two bedrooms on the second floor and two bathrooms on the second floor. And on the first floor is a kitchen, living room, bathroom. Yeah. It's, it's an odd... Two, two bedroom now? Hmm. Two bedrooms. So I guess the only thing, instead of, we'll just, I'll have that deed restriction. Yeah. Well, we already have yeah. that. So this way... That's it. But it's, yeah. it's just that the house was bigger and it's always still under the guise of a repair, I guess. It's, we're, 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 we're getting yeah. in the gray area. Yeah, we are. Right, so, right uh, now, we have it as restriction. Deed restriction and... and, and I'm trying to figure out, every time I drive by, where's that septic going? So as you're coming down Main Street and you come to the stop sign, there's a stone wall on your left. That wall is going to be raised another two and a half feet higher and the septic's going to be right behind it. Behind it? Yes. Where the tall grass is? Well, it's not tall grass now. Well, oh, grass. Is yeah. that, no, I thought that was with the wetlands. Well, it's between the wetlands and the wall. Okay. Yeah. Not a whole lot of room there. You go check it out. You drive right by there. I drive every day. When I look at it, I'm like, <laughs> the house, the barn looks nice. The, I'm sure the things are you know where good. usually parks the, uh, the walls are beautiful. Equipment. Yeah. It's over in that corner. That whole wall. Oh, around they, they did an excellent job. Just trying to figure out how that septic's Yeah, they put the windows in today. It's moving along. <laughs> um, so I think that's all I have for agents. Oh, I will point out, though, um, I did have uh, somebody complain that I was taking too long to review plans um, <laughs> specifically and that I was you know, making it difficult because I was rejecting plans by engineers and that um, I'm just basically taking time to review the plans. And this one particular plan, I had it for two days and I hadn't reviewed it yet. Um, there was another plan that I had had for like 20 days, um, but I, I'm doing them in the order they come in and that's the way it works. So, um, yeah, so I'm stones. trying. I have a few other things to do besides review septic plans. So Some of these so are held up. falling under the DEP guidelines, and which I, I know you are. DEP has no timeline on reviewing plans. I meant as far as the... Oh, for reviewing the plans. Yeah. yeah, but there's no timeline on how long it's supposed to take no, for what you. What you that out, finding which is weird. Faults with, didn't you say that? No. Yeah, yeah sometimes you, you know, can really get to it because a lot of times I open up the plan, but I get pulled away. I know, I know towns that that have forty that in their regulations they say forty five days. You will not hear from us for forty five days. Yeah, 
Maybe that's what we're So <laughs> once I get caught up, you know, I, you know uh, then I, I'm usually pretty good, but it was like one week we had like six plans filed. Yeah. And one of them was that 2117 Williams with two alternative systems. It took me longer to review it. First come, first serve. So, and then go in other stuff like houses and dogs and goats yep. and cows and <laughs> storm water. And and everyone's in a rush. There's always a closing tomorrow. Yep. This, so um, I just want you to be best. aware. Okay. Well. Building Commissioner and I went to a property on Shopslot Road in Dighton, and um, we found single family home with uh, six campers on the properties. Uh, five were inhabited, one was used for storage. They all had some type of uh, water set up with, with hoses that ran into the campers. We did observe one, one camper put his, uh, it was hard to tell where the septic went, uh, where the sewerage went. Uh, one went directly into the woods. Uh, another one uh, went into a 55 gallon drum. Uh, I guess they got chemical toilets. And, but in any event, we don't know where the electricity comes from. The whole, thing is illegal. Uh, I, I suppose you did read our report? Yeah, I did. Yeah, okay, it came out. So um, we'll be <clears throat> asking them to come in. Maybe we can get them in next meeting and get right, this squared away. The, yeah, the next meeting off. We could do something early, but that's fine. Next meeting. No, we have, they, uh, <coughs> yeah, the housing code says that they, we have 30 days from the, the time they uh, received the, the violation order. Um, yeah. Do you and, want to stretch and, and, yourself? And that they, no, and, the, and that they request a hearing, you know, we have 30 days you right, know, right. To, yeah. to schedule them. Unless they make specific claims, <coughs> and that's outlined, they do not make any specific claims in the letter I saw from the attorney, so. So we're um, good next meeting? Yeah, I, I, to okay. be on the safe side, I'd rather schedule the next meeting rather than push it to November, because then we're gonna be yeah, I only have one meeting. too oh, yeah, far yeah. along, so. Um, okay. If Todd wants to reverse one of the judges. Chief, um, I, I believe from what I read today, the notification also of the meeting has to go to each occupant Correct. of each camper. Which makes along sense. Along with the, the, owner of the owner of the property. There is a tenant. Well, that's legal though. There's two apartments in the barn. Uh, one is for the mother-in-law, the other one is occupied. Um, supposedly, according to the commission, they have their own septic system for that structure. Um, but the other, the others, is, uh, found eight unregistered vehicles. Um, basically, it was the, the portable, portable water and uh, yeah. well, the electricity and all the other yeah, things. Just, uh, the whole mess is illegal. You, you can't. You can't permanently reside in, in a camper. And no. no. And now with the winter coming, it's just allowable for the housing code. I was reading about garden hoses today, how they, by sitting there with the sun on, they create a lot more bacteria, which is not good. There are specific hoses uh, that uh, don't freeze because they, after they're used, they collapse and the water runs out. And some of them don't have uh, but these are just look like plain old God hoses to me, so it's not a healthy so, situation. So the, yeah, those those campers are unfit for human habitation year round, obviously, and only the Board of Health can issue temporary housing. It's under it's under the housing code. I think it's four thirty, where they actually need permission. Yeah, they need permission from us, and that would be in case of somebody had a fire in their house, right. and we they wanted to stay on their property, of course, and then we the right provisions would have to be in place. But just to allow someone um, well, to live in those conditions, allowed, because that would be, um, would, they could have uh, an adverse effect on their own health by living yeah. in a condition like that. So. I know, not, not to push everybody along, but 715. So. <coughs> Correspondence, 715. Oh, all right. 714. Just kidding. Is that the one at Bristol Ivy? Yeah. 
There's a uh, meeting in Bristol. I think we all went last year. It was about rabies, and this is the one for this year. Um, October 30th. So we can email it to everybody. You can put it on your calendars. But it looks like something I, think I should be going to. Um, I'm assuming you guys want me to go to it because it seems important. Um, this is the chairman of the Middleborough Board of Selectmen looking for uh, looking for the state next year to do something different than spraying for the mosquitoes after they're a problem. I like that was what we pushed for, and they yeah, actually, this was yeah. they started spraying very early this year, very early. They were actually pretty proactive. And behind the scenes, I don't know if anybody. You actually were very proactive with that, starting that petition. Uh, yeah. Thank you for that. So, it's... Yeah, well, you need people to push the other Oh, ones. Middleborough was critical, too. Well, Lakeville was critical, too. Yeah. Were you critical? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We yeah. The whole region, yeah. huh? Yeah. We were the hub, I guess. I don't know how we say that. So, just, just really quick, as far as... Um, the mosquitoes going forward in the spring, and, and I know when Governor Baker's press conference, Adam Lakeville, you know, you know, push a lot of money to to help you know deal with the issue. Um, the problem is in the spring, you know, if we have a very wet winter again, the swamps are full of water. That's what the mosquitoes are breeding. That's where they're coming out of. Um, you know, with the Triple E or predominantly the Triple E. The um, hmm. yeah. The, um, in, in the spring, the, the mosquito control does apply larvicide to the swamps the best they can. However, it's extremely difficult, if not completely inaccessible, to reach a lot of the parts of the swamp. So no matter how much money they spend, you get to a point you just can't do anything about it. So, um, but I think just monitor, I think, you know, I, I have no problem monitoring the uh, situation, you know, as it comes up, and, and again, you know, I know Todd, yourself, yeah. myself, we were pretty proactive. You know, this this is like the, the epicenter here. So, which brings me to, I think we just need to remind everybody that the ban is still in place because we haven't <coughs> had a have hard frost right. yet. So, still close the public yeah, field. We haven't had the, the killing frost. So, um, on a good note, uh, the Baker Polito administration, Mass DEP, announced 2.9 million dollars in grants of which Dighton received $4,500. This is through the Sustainable Materials Recovery Program. It was uh, 54, wasn't it, or was oh, it 45? Do I have it backwards? Yeah. 5,400, yeah. yeah, sorry. Uh, these grants uh, must reinvest the funds in their recycling programs for things such as new recycling bins of carts, public education, outreach campaigns, collection of hard to recycle items, and the establishment of recycle programs in schools, municipal buildings, and other spaces. So maybe, maybe we can get our recycling inventory done now. Maybe. Yep. I believe you can hire personnel out of that money. Right. Yeah. Then we can go from there once we get our inventory done. We'll never be able to go full blown on the uh, minutes. This is reset. <coughs> IQ kits. That's that's, that's going to take a little bit more doing. So this, these are the minutes from the two meetings. Okay. You guys read this? Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of August 28th and September 11th? So moved. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Uh, and that was approved both. Yes. Yeah, both uh, August 28th and September 11th. No further discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Anything else from anybody? Want to mention anything? Nope. All done? Yep. Do you have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay. Excuse me. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, that carries. So, so. Night, everybody. Thank you, Cable. Have a good evening, everyone. Good night.